and welcome back everyone welcome back i apologize for the downtime i apologize for the extended delay but we have returned with a qualifying match with the beginning of this lovely best of three and spawning in the bottom left hand corner of alkyon and we have our blue terran player the sc2 terran it is the sdc and spawning in the top right hand corner, we have the Broodwall Protoss player, the Red Protoss from Land of Taiwan. It is Starat. And if you're in the chat, predictions are now open. Place your bets on who you think will take the series. Best of luck in the chat here. I'm not too familiar with how well versed our players are in this mod. Starat, of course, he did roll random. Bear that in mind as well. Did roll random, did land on Protoss. And despite that, blindly, the SCC is going for a proxy Rax. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Oh my god. He's crazy he is crazy. He's wild and um, I, I Think this is my first time casting the SCC. I'm a little bit starstruck a little bit. You know, we have um Of course a long history with some of these players specifically with the ex axiom players For those who do not know the SCC he was not on axiom, but he was living with the axiom players He was living with crank with Ryung, with heart with Alicia uh, with the axiom boys back in the day so the SDC was kind of like uh, an honorary Axiom player, if you will. And uh, that's also a, a kind of a reason why our tournament is called the Sparkling Tuna Cup. What, what, what are the initials of the Sparkling Tuna Cup? Uh, the, the STC? Like, it's, <laughs> like it's, 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 it's all there. Um, so where there was a, a bit of a reference there to the SCC specifically um, in our in our own tournaments even just you know to, to have that kind of reference point but here we go we are going to be setting up and we are setting up with the initial proxy reapers are on the way probe scout will confirm that lacerax is missing so star he knows that something's wrong he knows that something is wrong something is up do you have a zealot on the way to be safe and secure likewise do you have that dragoon range where the reaper has arrived and with good enough micro this reaper should not go down with good enough micro bearing in mind as well that the SCC he retired a long time ago. He retired a very, very long time ago. Only recently came back to casting and only recently came back to playing, which is why I don't know where to place the SCC. I know that, again, he was a very good player, very strong player back in the day, back in Heart of the Swarm. I actually think that the SCC, if I recall correctly, I think he retired before Legacy of the Void or maybe going into Legacy, um, but a very, very long time ago as he is going for the proxy starboard. <laughs> one, one, one. The 111 setup here. Proxy Reaper into Proxy Starport. Cyclones are going to be on the way. As the SEC is getting ready for that eventual, I imagine, drop into the main or maybe Proxy Liberator. Meanwhile, the Dragoon has arrived. Reaper gets owned back. So far, the SEC did not get he did not get much damage done in the main. And Starat is gaining map control. Starat does move out. Cyclone in position. Oh, gets a lock on. And we'll get on top of the Dragoon. And massive shots going off. Doesn't quite pick it off, though. Cyclone taking a lot of hits as well. Oh, my God. And the Cyclone is going to fall. A strong start for Starat. One Cyclone falls. Another Cyclone on the way. We can see that the SCC is attempting to expand. But he is in trouble. He is now in trouble. Boys are being pulled to repair. Cyclone does arrive. We'll hold the line for now. Oh. We'll barely hold on. Can be repaired. Will defend. Meanwhile, we have confirmation it is going to be the proxy liberator across the map towards the main. The lib is on the way. And we even have the SCC committing into Marauder production. Jesus, very tech heavy here. Going slack with Marauder. Reaper does get across the map. Didn't go down earlier. Gets two probes. Ah, but the Dragoons, they do rally across the map. They commit. And they're going for the Cyclone. One Cyclone goes down. Repairs only on the other. Marauder has arrived. Reaper, Reaper goes back in. Liberator into the main. Chaos all over the place. Looks like with the help of the repairs, the Cyclone will defend. Meanwhile, probes are falling left to right. Start. Late reaction. Late reaction for the Protoss. Seven, eight, nine probe kills. Ay, ay, ay. So much damage. Dragoon as well. Ooh. Dragoon goes down. No mining in the main. You want to cross map that one Cyclone is still barely holding on. <laughs> oh no! Cyclone goes down. Another one pops just in time. Liberator final force as well, but that was 12 probe kills. 12 probes across the map, but bear this in mind the fact that Star is still in a two base economy. 
can still make two probes at a time, can still maintain himself, and the, the Dragoon can is still getting higher and higher. Oh my god. Yeah, so many shots going off. Takes out another Cyclone. That was a lot of dead Dragoons, though. Is this worth it? Get some Marauder. And again, these trades are still going to be good enough here for the Protoss. He might not be killing the Terran player, but he's containing on two base or one base. Picking up a Widowmine. Delaying the expand. Building up more Dragoons, just rallying everything across the map. Just purely Dragoon. And it looks like he's breaking through. He takes down the depot, busts into the main. What is it to defend? Oh, does have Stim. But barely any Marines. Yeah, no Marauders either. It looks like Starat, he is going to be able to do it. He will overwhelm. There's one Marine left. Against six Dragoons. Now five. But so many. And they can just start to step forward. And what's in the main? We have a handful of Marines trickling out. We have one Marauder as well. Bunkers on the way in the main. Another Liberator has arrived. Jeez. <laughs> The SDC doesn't stop. Keeps going. Cyclone gets another couple of probes, but not too many. This time a much better defense, much cleaner defense here from the Protoss. From Starat. He defends back at home. He's pushing into that main base. Dealing so much damage. Remember the SCV forces up all these boys. They're not mining. Miroda gets started to town. Uh, there is that one bunker though. The Dragoons, they avoid the bunker. Pushing in towards the main. Oh, they barely do not get the Marauder. And more boys are being pulled. The SC he's holding. He's barely... Oh, no! Uh, he's trying to hold on here, but he's down to one Marauder. And he just doesn't have enough. He, he just can't hold on. Not anymore. Valiant effort here in the defense by the SCC. But GG gets called and Starad takes game number one. GG. Starat does take a lead in the series to get a very chaotic game one. Bear this in mind as well that the SCC didn't even know his opponent was Protoss. He had no idea what, who his opponent was. Remember, it was a random player and he just went blindly into the initial proxy Reaper, into the follow-up proxy Liberator. He did, a lot, he did do a lot of damage. Remember, 12 probes went down with the Liberator harass. But back at home, he wasn't able to defend. He wasn't able to maintain himself on base. He wasn't able to expand either. The non-stop Dragoon aggression eventually, eventually brought him down. Eventually did bring him down. And now we're getting into our next game. We are getting ready for game number two. And as a reminder, game two is going to be on Citadel. It's going to be on Citadel. And we'll be entering another TVP, I would imagine. Yes, yes, he's picking a Brutal Terran. Just getting all the casters involved. Just catching up. Uh, looks like we're actually waiting for some of our other casters as well. Looks like, okay, looks like the entirety of the round of 16 is completing, is concluding. And we are going to be covering, I believe, every single qualifying match. Uh, that's going to be a lot of matches. <laughs> that's going to be a, a lot of best of threes. But I think we're going to be covering them one after the other. That might be the plan. Just uh, waiting for our lovely Spanish caster, El Edmoso, El Edmoso. I mean, shout out to all the other language casters as well. Mm 
Shout out to Cyan, who's casting in Brazilian, Enki in Spanish, Bratok, of course, in Russian, TKL in French. Ah, do appreciate. Okay, we have confirmation. So the way this uh, format works is it's a loser's pick when it comes to picking whether they want to play on SE2 or Brood War. So because um, the SEC lost game one, he is picking to commit and to stick with StarCraft 2. Meanwhile, that means that Starat is going to play Brood War once again, which means once again he picks random. Now, this ca that means he can land on random Brodos, or we can land on Brodos, Terran, or Zerg. The real question becomes, though, is the SEC going to try and cheese again? <laughs> Is he going to go for another proxy? I hope not. I hope he plays it out standard, but it's, uh, it all comes down to the STC. Um, so yeah, we have confirmation that every single qualifying match is going to be casted. I know that other pe um, there were people asking uh, about Quanta. You know, are we going to be casting some Quanta at some point? The answer is yes. After this series, we'll be jumping into Quanta versus Kiwia. We will be there. Here we go, we're getting into the ace match here and spawning in the top right hand corner. Oh, sorry, not the ace match, sorry. We're getting into game two. My apologies, my apologies. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Getting into game two and spawning in the top right hand corner of Citadel, we have the South Korean Terran player, the StarCraft 2 Terran. It is the STC. There we go. And spawning in the top left hand corner, we have oh the random player rolling Brood War Zerg from Taiwan. It is Starat. Here we go. Here we go. As we are going to be expanding back at home, it's just going to be hatch first here out of our Zerg player. Likewise, we should be seeing a much more standard opener, macro opener out of our Terran player. Something important about the map that we just loaded into, this is a four player spawn map. So, neither player really knows if their opponent is right next to them horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. They don't know the location of each other yet, but with the help of this Overlord Scout, Starat will confirm. I'm going to be a very fast scout here from Starat. Likewise, if the Overlord is spotted by the building, then the SCC will also be able to confirm the location of his opponents upon seeing the scouting pattern of the Overlord as well. So there's a bit of a give and take here, potentially, uh, if the Terran player is able to get eyes on that Overlord. As for now, the SCC is going to be pulling up. Ooh, going for a double gas opener. Double gas into a factory makes sense, considering he does not know what he's up against. Remember, the SSC does not know if he's up against a Terran, Protoss, or Zerg player. So he's going for a very safe, tech-heavy build, which means the Zerg player has a bit of a better start, a stronger start early on. Overlord dipping forward. Still has yet to confirm. Oh, we'll get eyes on the Marine. Yeah, the Marine is scattered, the Overlord as well, and now everyone knows. Now everyone is aware of what's going on. You can see the SCV immediately does pull away. Here we go. 
<laughs> <We're> all... <laughs> Shout, Enki's jumping in mid-series. Oh, we're letting him know. Letting him know. It's all good. Oh, he's doing it again, doing the same build. Bold. I mean, in a way, the same build is going for a 1-1-1 proxy star port into I Imagine Proxy Liberator. Wings are moving out. Ooh, Starat rushing into a lair. That I was not expecting. So very fast second gas, guys are into fast lair. This, I imagine, is going to be for two base Muta. That would make the most sense in my mind. For those that are curious, Hydra production is hatch tech, not lair tech in a Brutal Zerg. So going into Hydra play it wouldn't make sense to, to wait for the lair or anything like that. So I'm leaning towards Mutas, but we'll see if maybe he has something else in store for us. Something more crazy. Do you have our spore colonies being set up? Or sunken colonies as well. Hellions are moving out. Liberator as well. So it's going to be Hellion harassed towards the right. And Liberator towards the left. Now the SSC is expanding. Is not going for the one base all in. But he is being aggressive nonetheless. So far start. He's keeping up with the Hellions. Colony is now done. And the Zerg player will defend. Doesn't want to overextend though. And pushes out off of creep. And yeah, massive Hellion shots going off. And that was not the best commitment there from Starat. He bleeds out a lot of lings. And there it is. There's a Spire. As we mentioned, two base Lair should just be two base Muta. The other, the other thing this could have been is maybe like a two base like Nidus all in. Like a Nidus Worm also does require the Lair. So that was the other possibility. At least in my mind, that was the other possibility. I'm, I mean... Maybe there's like some drop lord all in that's also like potential. There's like potential there, maybe. Ooh, because once again, the leaves they keep getting painted out. They get they get painted out into the open, liberated into the main. More Hellions are amassing. Now, leaves are getting roasted. Oof. So many leaves fall. It's been 23 leaves. Oh my god. That's a lot of leaves. Liberated into the main. Bearing in mind, no queens. It's, it's Brutal Zerg, no queens to defend, it has to be Spores. Spore does finish, but Liberator out of range of the Spore Crawler, ay yeah, ay, ay. I, I mean, there's no answer, straight up, like, what can you do? There is no answer to the Liberator, it's just in position, and it denies any kind of scouting, or any kind of mining, in the main. And I think that's just game. <laughs> I'll be honest, that's brutal. Uh, we have some Scourge on the way, that'll help. But another Liberator from behind? Jesus, and... Uh, this is brutal. Uh, again, without any preemptive spore crawlers, like, what can you do? What, what can you actually do here? Oh my god, does the drones line up? Scourge have arrived, but Hellions, they just annihilate the mineral line. 22 more drone kills. 23! Oh my god. 23 drones go down. There's still the one Liberator into the, in the main. Scourge will clean it up. But uh, this is game ending damage. Ay, ay, ay. Unfortunately, there was no spore in the main either. The mutants will clean this up, but Starat, he is down to four workers. Only four drones. And he, he can't recover. He, it's no, no shot. <laughs> so it looks like we are looking to get into the ace match here. As much as I would love to see a, a wild comeback from our Zerg player, I mean, they're down to five drones. Uh, there's only so much you can do with such a limited economy. Um, mutas are quite expensive as well. How many mutas are there? There's two. Two mutas and two Scourge. That's all there is. And all that the Terran player has to do in this position is just chill, build up on two bases, saturate, build up more Cyclones, more Hellions. I mean, with Mass Cyclone, this army can in the game. Like, what are mutas going to do to this? Well, what are they going to do? Ah. Uh, ah, uh, no. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. As they attempt to dive into the mineral line, but alas, no way in. Cyclones are behind. They shut down uh, one of the mutas. And GG gets called. The SEC will tie the series. We are going to game three. GG. GG. Well played. And with that, we're going to the ace match. Let's go. <laughs> when it comes to that build, honestly, it looks really brutal. As I mentioned before, the anti air defense, um, especially early on by Zerg players, is heavily reliant on spores 
and on Hydras, is what I would typically say. Like, usually, standard ZVT is Ling Hydra, Ling Hydra into Lurker tech. Um, but without Hydra tech, uh, rushing into the Spire like that, Mutas, of course, are very expensive, and there was no Spore in the main. To be fair, it's also because of the proxy. Because Liberator was proxied, it hit earlier than normal did hit much earlier because of that. I'm sure in a standard game, Starat would have had a Spore in position, um, but was caught with his pants down. He wasn't fully aware of what was going on. And the SSC did catch him with his pants down, did Snowball out of control. Well, did Snowball out of control. And with that, we're going all the way to our final game. It's going to be on Monty Hall. Catching up. The second series not to be a tour. Oh, Bowenan! ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? The cannon rusher himself. Ah. We'll be casting some Bowenan later on in the evening. Don't you worry. We'll get there. Bowenan infamously a 2 0 in classic. What was it like two weeks ago at this point? Or a week ago? Taking down classic 2 0 in the, the last SEL. Este Bowenan. Have to wait a million years. Ah, oh, no. Ah, oh, not like this. It's like, we'll make them quick, Papi. We'll, we'll do our best. It's not like we have a TVT after this. Oh. <laughs> true, true. Unfortunately, there is a Terran versus Terran uh, before Boanan's series, but we'll get there. We'll get there. It's okay. It's okay. You know, you have some time to get some food. You know, you can make some dinner. Get some water. Rest up, Papi. Rest up. But here we go. We're getting into the Ace match and spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Monty Hall. We have the South Korean Terran player, the Brood War Terran. It is the SDC. Did at 4 p.m. Big. Ah, uh, let's go. <laughs> and spawning in the top left-hand corner. We have his opponent. We have... Uh, you can you can meal prep, you know? You can clean the house. Ah. Uh. <laughs> In the top left hand corner, we have the Taiwanese Protoss player, the SC2 Protoss. It is Starat. Now, because Starat is playing Protoss, oh, sorry, playing StarCraft 2, he did pick Protoss. He did not pick random. In the last two games, he was rolling random. So the SCC was playing blind. He was playing very blind when it came to his openers. This time, he knows what he's up against. He knows he is aware, and my eyes are on this SCV. Now, once again, welcome everyone. Welcome one and all to Monty Hall. This is a pseudo island map. You have the main base and we are fully walled in by all these minerals. Someone else did kind of uh, relate this to or did kind of compare this map to a MOBA map. Does make sense because there are three lanes. There are three lanes on this map. If you mine through one, you gain access to the lane um, and you can't really gain access to the others from the center, the left or the right hand side, except unless you're working with drop play, for example, with like medics, sorry, um, with drop ships, with shuttles, that sort of thing. As uh, the terrain does fully wall off these three areas, these three lanes. Meanwhile, we do have the proxy. Proxy factory across the map. Oh boy, the SSC has been very aggressive. He's going to be opening up two ranks back at home with a proxy factory across the map. I imagine this is going to be for a tech lab and proxy tank production. That is my, I mean, I would assume that's the case. Uh, we'll see if we take an extra gas geyser. Um, oh my god, as we are rushing into an academy. Okay, the academy is on the way to get in towards stim production, I imagine. And we'll see how this all comes together. Meanwhile, back at home, Starat opening up Robo. Very safe opener out of the Protoss player. Oh my god, going gate into Robo into a second gateway before expanding. <gasps> We're floating in! He's crazy! He's floating inside! Ah, oh. <laughs> the, the factory! And I believe it'll barely be out of range, just barely. It's gonna be close. We do see Starat mining through the center to expand. Meanwhile, yep, the factory, and we're going for the proxy Vulture, right into the main base of the Brodos. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, but he doesn't, he doesn't know. He doesn't see, but Vulture production has begun. Meanwhile, the Protoss player just focusing on eventually expanding, on breaking out. But again, because of the safe opener, Fast Immortal. Fast Immortal's on the way. And how long will the SC wait? How long does he wait? He is waiting for the, at least a second Vulture. That means with the help of the Chrono Boost, this Immortal may pop out in time. Depending on the army positioning here, these Vultures might not actually get much done. Again, depending on where the Immortal is going to be. 
Oh my god, he's, he's sauce. <laughs> he's sauce. Just get out, just get eyes on this. Oh, the force field. He's crazy. Locks down one and both vultures as well. Both vultures go down only for two probes. A much better trade here for the Prodos. Shuts down the proxy. And star at he defense. And he's still on one base, by the way. <laughs> Going for a second gateway. And it's the Twix man. He's breaking out. And now at least his factory, Dust Scout, does confirm. Going to be landing back into the main. Back at home, building up a hefty bio army. With Marines, with the medics, of course. And soon to be Stim. Our Stim is already done. And you can see the SSC just scanned. He's looking for the expansion. He's trying to confirm, is this a one base all-in or not? We can see it is. It is a one base all-in for the Protoss player. Three gateways of Robo. The prison's moving out to reinforce. It's all or nothing for Staryat. Back at home, no bunkers. Supply block. Uh, now is not the time. Now is not the time for a supply block. Vulture production continues, but back at home, what is it to defend? And sure, there might be a wall, but that's what the war prison's for. You can just, you can just, yeah, rally on over. Can oh, oh god, <gasps> no, he's not paying attention. No, the prison, the war prison goes down. Oh my god. Never mind. <laughs> the army's stuck. The army cannot get in. Uh, the prison was here to elevate her in, but looks like he was distracted by the vulture. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. That could have been game. I mean, it's hard to say because uh, the bio arm, the simmed bio can be quite powerful. True. But uh, there was potential for Star Hats, and now the prism has gone down. The army is stuck outside. You can see the factory rotating to scout to confirm whether or not there's an expansion. And Star Hat continues with the all-in. Backup war prisms on the way. On the way. Dark Shrine as well for DTs. But you can see that the SSC has so much time. Now he's got dropships, bunkers on the way as well. Bunkers in production. Uh, this is a bold move. He's going for a drop. At the same time, here comes the main army. <gasps> oh my god, the Wraith takes down the prism again. He takes it down for a second time. That, that still means we can't do anything. He can't push in. The prism goes down. He's cracked. <laughs> third war prism on the third time's the charm. Third war prism. Let's go. Oh my god, which means the dropship, we can commit. The STC, he's going in. He's sending it. Oh, do you have a hallucinated prism though? Trying to bait out his opponents. The Marines get unloaded. And there's not much at home to defend, but there might be a recall. Ooh, there's no NG. Not enough NG for a recall. Marines, they step in. They go for the mineral line. Probes are going down. And again, start. He still can't do anything with his army. He's still stuck outside. DT to defend, but that's going to be 11. Oh, man, that's the entire mineral line. That's 12 probes going down. Ay, ay, ay. So workers do full star right. It's all or nothing. We have to commit. Send it, Bobby. But how fast can he send it? Let's get into the main. And here we go. Does elevator over the wall. Does drop in, but there's a bunker. There's stim. There's medics. And the SC can hold his own. He can even pull the boys if he needs to. Bunker is going to go down. The boys are being pulled. Yes, he can. He hold. He can. He can and he will. The prism goes down as well for the third time. And that's it. That's game. No GG. No GG. The SCC takes the series two to one. Oh my God. The hell just happened. GG. Well played. The SCC. He survives. We a roller coaster, a roller coaster ride of emotions there. The SSC he started off with a proxy factory floating into the main, which did nothing. By the way, remember it was proxy factory, double vulture, killed two probes. He only killed two workers. He got completely shut down. It looked like the SSC he was down and out, but he was able to snipe the first warp prism. Unfortunately, Starat he was otherwise not looking right. He was distracted. I want to believe he was distracted by the one vulture in the main, so he wasn't paying attention. The prism overextended, the prism went down, and that just gave the SSC so much time to recover, to get a bunker up and running, and to defend, and GG. Crazy. <laughs> Congratulations! The SCC qualifies for the StarCraft Evolution Full Championship. The SSC does it qualify. Now we are getting ready for our next qualifying match. Let's go. We're getting ready for our next match here. Oh, 
Our two Terran players have been patiently waiting this entire time. We're going to be jumping into a TVT between Quanta and Satoru. 